So now that I think of it, I haven't really made a fully dedicated video for the RC controller. And I actually think this is worthy of its own video because there's so many things to this controller and so many things that this controller can do that you probably don't know. So in today's video, I wanna share my experience using the DJRC controller for seven months. And I also wanna share my most valuable tip when it comes to this controller for you to save both time, be more consistent and have a more convenient travel experience and also save a lot of money. But first, let's dig into the build quality of the DJI RC controller. Now, if you haven't put your hands on the DJI RC yet, you'll definitely get the feeling of cheap plastic. And I think it's the bare minimal to keep both weight and cost down. But despite the cheap feel of the controller, it's holding up pretty well. I've had a few hits with the controller, but there's no marks left on it. So the overall build quality of this controller is pretty good. And it actually reminds me a little bit of the DJI Avada, which also has that insane plastic feel to it. And it feels like it's going to break, you know, the first crash you have. And you get somewhat the same feeling with this controller. So there's some magic in the plastic that DJI is using, I guess, because the controller and the Avada still holds up well. Now, when it comes to the weight of this controller, it comes in at 382 grams, which is slightly less than the DJI RC N1. The DJI RC N1 controller has a weight of 390 grams, so that's a little bit more than the DJI RC controller. Now, the huge advantage here is where the DJI RC controller has the built-in screen at 382 grams, whilst the DJI RC N1 controller doesn't have a built-in screen, so so you will need to add that extra weight to your hands. So the DJI RC N1 controller has a weight of 677 grams when you add something like an iPhone 13 Pro Max to it as your screen. So almost double the weight in your hands. As for traveling with these two controllers, there's not a huge difference. It's only those eight grams, which is the main difference. And I can also feel that the RC N1 controller is a little bit heavier, but not much. And that's basically the difference because most of us are running around with our phone anyway. So that's not gonna put a weight to your travel bag, it's only gonna put a weight to when you are holding your controller. So if you feel like it's gonna be heavy in length, then definitely the 382 grams, which this has over the 677 grams, which is the combo of the phone and the controller. And talking about the screen here, this screen has a peak brightness of 700 nits, which is a huge deal if you ask me. And uh, even though most of the phones now have a higher peak brightness than the DJI RC controller, which means that you will get a brighter screen when you connected something to the uh, RC N1 controller, it will still for, for some reason, the phones will still dim down, especially the iPhones, which I'm used to. And that's also something that I hate with the iPhones. And one of the reasons I'm never flying my drones with a phone again. Now that we have this, if this breaks, if I have the option, I will run to the nearest store and pick up a new one instead of flying my drone with the iPhone. Never gonna happen unless I have to. And if you're curious about how this controller is in bright sunlight, I mean, when the sun is right above your head, no clouds, just flashing down, how is it to use this in those conditions? There's actually no issues. You can easily see the screen, but of course, if you're facing the screen towards the sun and get the sun reflecting right in the middle of your screen, you might experience some lack of visibility. So all I can say is I have no issues using and filming with this controller, looking at the screen in bright conditions. No at all and that's one of the reasons if it was a problem I would go over to my phone and try my best to use this even though it dims down but there's no issues so I have no reason to leave this for the phone like I said phone is my last resort for for filming with my drone and I rather get a couple of these now a huge thing with the, these controllers is of course gonna be the signal strength and the transmission feed, what you see on your screen. So basically the video transmission feed, which is coming from your drone, giving you a live preview here on your screen. So the transmission feed coming from your drone being delivered to your controller runs off of OcuSync 3.0. So you'll get a crystal clear 1080p 30 FPS video signal from your drone. This image is also well sharpened, so you won't get that out of focus experience. However, if you use this controller with the new DJI 
Sky Mini 3 standard, you will get a softer look because it runs off the older OcuSync 2.0 video transmission, which only sends out a 720p feed. But for the other compatible drones like the Mavic 3 and Air 2S and the DJI Mini 3 Pro, you will get a crystal clear 1080p 30fps feed. So a huge thing for me, I get a crystal clear image which is bright enough for me at 700 nits and the quality that I see on the screen is also pretty good. Using this controller for seven months, I've also experienced some issues. From all the controllers that DJI have, this is what I mean is the best controller, but it's not perfect. The screen can be extremely laggy at times, especially when navigating through the settings. It's extremely frustrating when you want to shoot something like a sunset or sunrise, or you're in a rush to capture something that will look better now than 30 seconds later. Or if you're just that guy that wants to have an instant reaction when you are tapping on something. So it's quite frustrating and something I hope can be improved with the firmware updates, but I highly doubt that DJI will focus on that because it works perfectly fine, it just lags. So I don't think there's a huge fix for that. But if you have experienced anything like that, please let me know in the comment section below. I hope I am the only one with this issue, but if you've had some similar issues, please let me know down in the comments below. Now the next one is not really a con, but something I mentioned in my earlier videos. The form factor of this controller is significantly bigger than the RCN1 controller, so it takes up more space. It's only minor, but if you pack only what you need, everything counts. So a little request to DJI here would be to have a flip out screen or a push or drag out screen on the next RC controller. Even though I think it's most unlikely that DJI will make another controller in the next few years, when this is selling and performing as good as it does. But if we had some sort of a hidden screen which we drag out or a flip out, it would make the controller even smaller and compact for traveling while still maintaining a larger screen and who knows, maybe the screen could get bigger as well. Now there's only so much you can say about the controller, right? It does everything that you want it to do, it turns on, it turns off, you have the two sticks to control your drone and it also has a screen so you can see what the drone does. But there is some things to this controller that you probably didn't know. Now, the first thing which you probably know is the two buttons here on the controller, the uh, record button for video and the snapshot button for taking photos. If you don't want to touch the screen every time you need to focus, you can also half press on the buttons to enable autofocus. And as soon as you do the other half press, it will hold that focus. So first pushing it a little bit in and then one more time and then it will hold that focus. Note that this will also put the focus back into center. So anywhere else on the screen where you might want to focus, you would need to tap that part with your finger. Now, one of the things that you probably didn't know that this controller could do, which will save you both time and money and make your travels more convenient, is that this controller can actually transfer files over to your SSD disk. So if you're out doing your thing and it happens that your SD card fills up, you can connect an SSD disk to your controller and go into the file section and then over to your micro SD card. Here you can preview and play back the footage as well as selecting a single file or all. So to transfer a single file, you simply tap hold on the clip you want to select. Then we're going to go over to the three dots on the top right corner and select move to. After selecting this, you select the three lines on the top left corner and choose your SSD disk. Then a folder if you have a specific folder where you want to save it to and then select move. As for the transfer speed, it's actually quite decent. It took about a minute to transfer a 800 megabyte file. So that means when you're out shooting with your Mini 3 Pro or any other drone that you use with the RC controller, you take out the micro SD card of the drone and you simply swap it out with the one which is connected to the RC controller already if you have one in and you plug in the micro SD card and then your SSD disk and go through the same steps as I just showed you and you can easily transfer one by one or all of the files at the same time. Now the next thing is something that I actually mentioned before and this is to use offline maps. This was a huge upgrade for a lot of people shooting in urban environments or deep inside the forest where there's no 
connection at all. There's no network connection. And to be able to now download maps of the area we're traveling to prior to our arrival is huge. But I also have a full dedicated video of that topic, which I will leave down in the description below if you wanna dive a little bit deeper and check it out. Now, the last thing I think is worth mentioning, this is one of the things that you might benefit from if you happen to be in the situation where you need to charge a device, whether this is your phone or any other device that needs a little bit of juice to get going. So with the DJRC controller, you also have a power bank in your hand, though the output is only five watts, so it's not gonna be your fastest charger, but it definitely does the job if you have no other options. So there you have my review of the DJRC controller and some hidden gems that will keep you going further. And also to save you some time and money, instead of buying all these uh, micro SD cards, you can buy one big, you can buy a few small ones, and you can spend the remainings on a bigger SSD disk that you can take with you in your travel bag, and you can transfer that easily it's super convenient. Now, like I said, I've been using this for seven months now with the DJI Mini 3 Pro, Mavic 3, and the Air 2S. And I must say, I haven't experienced any significant flaws that can't be fixed. Now, the biggest issue that I've had is, of course, laggy time. It's lagging. It's not every single time, but it, when it does, it is extreme. And I hate lag. Lag is the worst thing ever. I hate it. Now, I hope you found some value in today's video. And if you did, make sure to leave a comment down below. And on your way down there, hit the subscribe button and like button for the algorithm. And with that said, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I will see you soon.